Hey all, and welcome to RoboBench Applications and Engineering. I'm Aaron, and in today's video, we're talking about precision control of your motors by using encoders. But before we get into all of that, let's take a look at a project that I've been working on. I like to garden, and so last year, after all that backbreaking work in planting my sweet corn, I decided to challenge myself to build a robot that would plant my sweet corn for me this year. So with that, let me introduce you to my robot with a corny name, CropBot. Now there's a lot going on with CropBot that we're not gonna get into today. But one important thing to know about gardening is that different crops require their seeds to be planted at different depths in the soil or different spacing, how far apart they're planted. And so with CropBot, it was important for me to precisely be able to control the depth that a corn kernel is planted into the ground and the spacing between corn kernels. So to do this, CropBot uses motor encoders. CropBot is equipped with four Torknado motors. Two of those motors are used to drive the tracks that moves CropBot along the ground. The other two motors are used to precisely control the plow that digs the trench where the corn kernels are planted, and then the grater that covers over the seeds with dirt after the seeds have been planted. Tetrix Torknado motors are equipped with a high resolution Hall Effect Quadrature encoder. We'll say what all that means for another video. But for now, what's important to know is that you can precisely control each Torknado motor down to one fourth of one degree. Now recall that there are 360 degrees in one rotation. So there are 360 degrees times four or 1,440 encoder counts. That means I can program my Torknado motor to rotate to any one of these 1,440 encoder counts. That's pretty precise movement. What's more, if I want the motor to rotate multiple times, then I can program it to rotate up to 2,147,483,647 encoder counts. Now that's a big number, but if I'm using a standard four inch Tetrix wheel, then that's about 300 miles worth of encoder counts. What's more than that, I can program that motor to rotate precisely down to about one one hundredth of an inch, one encoder count. So that's very precise movement. Why does all this matter? On CropBot, the encoders let me set the precise distance between corn kernels as they're being planted. So as I input that plant spacing into the program, then the program can calculate how many encoder counts the motors need to rotate to achieve that exact distance. The planting depth works in a similar way. The plow is driven up and down by a Torknado motor that's connected to a rack and pinion gear. Whatever I input as the planning depth, the program can then calculate the number of encoder counts that the motor needs to rotate to achieve that exact depth. Whether you're building a farming robot like this one, or you're building a robot for some other engineering challenge, or maybe you're building a robot for an autonomous robotics competition, precision navigation and movement is often very important. And that's exactly what motor encoders give you. Let's look at another robot example. This robot is a game playing robot. After the robot draws the game board, then you take turns with the robot erasing lines. And whoever takes the last line loses. But you can only erase lines from one row at a time. Again, there's a lot going on here with this robot, including the use of machine vision to recognize which lines are present and which lines have been erased but we won't get into all of that here. The thing I wanna point out is how the robot uses encoders to create an XY coordinate grid. The encoder counts on one Torknado drive the marker back and forth in the X direction. The encoder counts on the other Torknado drive the table back and forth in the Y direction. The robot can move the marker precisely to any point in this XY coordinate grid to draw or erase a line. Using encoders, we could even program the robot to draw a picture if we wanted to. Besides exact positioning, you can also use motor encoders to set your exact speed that you want your motors to rotate at. Torknado motors allow you to set that speed between negative 720 degrees per second and positive 720 degrees per second, negative being counterclockwise and positive being clockwise. So there are 360 degrees in one rotation. If you're using the standard 60 to one gearboxes that come on a Torknado, 
That's two rotations per second in either direction. Another advantage to using motor encoders is that they give you consistent performance every time. Maybe you've tried to program a robot using motor power to drive in a straight line, and you set the motor powers to the same level, but you notice your robot drifting off to one side or to the other. Well, that's because every motor is a little bit different and they don't use the voltage supplied by the battery in the same way. What's more, that as the battery drains, your motors start to slow down. Well, you don't have these problems when you're using motor encoders. Motor encoders give you the same performance consistently every time. There are plenty of other engineering applications for using encoders to control the motors of your robot. Whatever activity, challenge, or competition you're building for, we always encourage you to use the engineering design process to achieve the best results possible. For more on using the encoders on your torque needle motors, check out the encoder examples that are provided in the Tetrix Prism Arduino library. And as always, remember to have fun, build some robots with encoders, and we'll see you next time.